Hey everyone, Christopher Beast here, and I wanted to talk about a topic that is of particular confusion to a bunch of people who watch my videos, and a lot of people ask me about it, and I talk about it a lot on streams, and I talk about it a lot on Discord. When I talk about theory, it's something I am constantly mentioning, and that is interps. What are interps? Why do I use them? Why do I think the entire community should at least acknowledge them? Um, and really, what's the point, purpose, and logical existence of them? as what the purpose of this video today is going to be about. Interps are something that, as someone who has spent months in the lore and spent months talking with other theorists, have emerged as a way to reconcile different theories with each other and help us get the most understanding from the game. Before really getting into the, the nitty gritty of each piece and part of this, I want to quickly state two things. One, this video is loosely scripted because I wanted to try to keep it as not formal as possible because interps are a very formal, complex STEM type idea and Signalis at times is really more of an art piece. So writing an extremely formal STEM piece to explain this formal STEM idea just kind of feels like we're getting very far away from the point of the game. The second thing I want to mention here is in order to truly understand Signalis, I am of the opinion, and I know some people disagree with me on this, that to truly understand the game, you must truly understand all interps. That all interps are equally valid, and that the only reason we need interps is to understand how to communicate to each other as theorists. So that way, when two people who both have equally valid opinions, given their context on the game, can actually communicate to each other rather than just spending the entire time debating over the basics. But if you are still interested, let's just get right into this. So how do interps work? Really, um, as, I, as I prefaced, the point of interps is to allow for rules and guidelines to group together various theories into large overarching groups that can then be used to allow for discussion within those groups and outside those groups. Interps create a kind of baseline to understanding Signalis, as the game is extremely interpretive, as it's meant to be, as it's more of an artistic piece. So to analyze it from a STEM objective and, and analyze the lore and theories, you need to kind of create a, hey, I'm here in my opinions on how reality works. So that way when other people have different opinions on where they are with reality, you are able to communicate with them more efficiently. And, and really that way we can avoid just constantly debating each other over over basics. Um, so what is the core mentality of interps? Interps follow logical guidelines, and that establishes the following mentality. If A leads to B, and A is not real, then by convention and connection, B is also not real in that context. Let's give a practical example. We find a skeleton underground, and we're like, that skeleton skull is a T-Rex. As of such, the skeleton around the T-Rex must also be a T-Rex. Then later on, we learn that the skull is in fact not what we assumed. It's not a T-Rex, maybe it's a Spinosaurus. As of such, that second conclusion is also rendered false. If the skull wasn't a T-Rex, then the body isn't a T-Rex. But we'd make this even more complicated. Let's say we dig up a rock or something, and we say, I think the rock is X. As long as there's sufficient evidence, if somebody says, well, no, the rock is Y, we can both be equally valid until more information is given, which in the case of Signalis isn't given, and in that case both X and Y are valid, and the conclusions of X and Y, the B points for both X and Y, are valid within the scope of X or Y. So if I say, hey, that rock is obsidian, as of such, it would make a really good knife. But if somebody else goes, hey, that rock is basalt, as of such, it would make a horrible knife. Those are opposite conclusions that are equally valid unless further information is given in the scope that they are introduced in. So let me give an example in Signalis real quick before getting into the major interps. The Shores of Eternity is the classic thing that I was thinking of when I first stumbled upon the concept of interps in like February. Um, so it's very common in the community to assume that everything in the Shores of Eternity is not real. It's one of the more conventionally agreed points of the game that, that isn't occurring in reality. If it is not real, then all notes, items, documents, and existences there do not physically exist. In this explanation, by connection, the KIY found there with the seals, the notes as well as the boat are all also not real. What they are, where they physically exist, depends on the interp, but this means that the pieces of evidence there, 
cannot be logically used in good faith to explain things that are physically existent. For example, you could not say that the notes that depict the, I think it's the Lovecraft uh, verses, physically exist within the Signalis universe. Or you could argue that if they do physically exist, they don't exist on the shores. Hopefully you're still following. You, you can't use the, the Arion notes in the second arrival as objectively real notes in that moment if you say that moment isn't real. How different interps then use this dynamic differ, but basically establishing a logical convention that says if, if something is deemed fake, then you can't use it for the real, and if it's deemed real, then you can't use it for the fake, is important. And the three major interps handle this dynamic in differing ways. I say three major interps because to my knowledge there are three major interps. It is very possible that there's a fourth, it's very possible that there's a fifth, it's possible there's hundreds that I just don't know of, but to my knowledge there are generally three interps. The first is dream theory. Dream theory with a dream interp argues that all evidence presented in the game exists within a dream. All evidence is rendered false. As of such, they have a lot of freedom of mobility with their theories. They are able to make conclusions and conjectures that are far removed anything any other theorist could even approach because their burden of evidence and burden of proof is far less. They are wagering everything is happening from the dream of someone, but because everything in the game is a dream, they don't really need evidence to prove who that person is. They don't really need evidence to prove that X and Y are connected because if it's stated as an objective fact within their interp that it is a dream, then that is the objective interp. It is the interp by which they are examining the lens of the game. And a lot of people I've seen have a very hateful relationship with dream theory. They either love it or they hate it. When I first got introduced to the community, dream theory was the only theory around, so I have a complex relationship with it myself. Um, but what makes dream theory particularly special is if the point of Signalis, not if, the point of Signalis is the love, it is the emotions, it is the characters, it is the, the setting, the environment. If that's the point, then dream theory is the greatest interp at helping understand the dev's vision. If you go into Signalis, you exit dream, the promise or whatever ending you just got, and instead of going, hey, what just happened? Hey, how do I explain this? Hey, what is going on in the world of Signalis? You want to go, that was a beautiful love story. That was a beautiful dynamic. And you want to explore deeper into that dynamic. Dream interps are the place to go. They don't have to worry too much about evidence, and they're more about the sustenance, the feeling, the expression. From there, we can move to something a little bit more STEM-based, and that's realist theory. Realist theory takes the extremely complex approach of deciding what's real and what's not. So, generally speaking, in realist inter, you're going to have the, the pre-cognitive idea that everything is real until proven otherwise. Now, realist interps differ greatly on where that line of until proven otherwise exists. Um, some dream theorists will say, hey, the flesh below Wang, nowhere physically exists. In fact, when you see the non-Euclidean movement that occurs in there, that's just the flesh walls contorting around to explain the room in a Euclidean fashion. Hey, every single thing that happens, when we get to Rotfront at the end of the game, we are physically at Rotfront through bioresonance. And that's how realist theory can work. Realist theory can either brute force the entire game using bioresonance as its argument. You know, I, I brought up in the beginning of the video, everybody agrees that the shores of um, eternity are not real, but a realist theory could easily go, yes, it is real. That is all happening within a bioresonant created place. We do not know the limits of bioresonance. As of such, we cannot assume that the limits of bioresonance are being surpassed here. We cannot assume that bioresonance cannot do this. So as of such, it is bioresonance doing it. Now, other realists, theorists might say the exact opposite. They might go, you think nowhere is real? You're insane. Look at nowhere. It's a bunch of flesh. It's not Euclidean. It doesn't make any, any logical sense. Bioresonance, we don't even know if that's really real. And, bio and they might make the exact contrary argument. They might argue that the Falk boss fight isn't real. They might argue that it is real. Realist theorists don't agree on very much, I'll be honest. Lots of debate, a lot of discussion going on in that sphere of existence. What's important to understand is that their general interp is based on the concept that if there is evidence that is sufficient for that theorist that something doesn't physically exist, then by it not physically existing, it cannot influence reality. So, to give an exact example of that here, if Rotfront isn't real, 
then Rotfront is the byproduct of something. So I've heard it be mentioned in realist theories before that Rotfront that we see is the bioresonant recreation by Arion. It isn't occurring in a dream. Well, it could be, but it is instead the Rotfront we see is a projection of Arion, while others argue contrary. Realist theorists are very confusing, very much split apart what they agree upon and where they don't agree, but I hope I at least captured a bit of how they, they conceptualize things. The final theory is KIY. KIY is not a very large theory, but it is my personal child, and it is an interp that takes that realist interp of, hey, what if we accept all evidence until proven otherwise, and goes, hey, what if we accept all evidence, period. KIY interp, I should preface here, is the most stem approach to things that I can possibly think of because it's written by someone who is a stem major, me. I love science. I love math. I love engineering. And technology is cool. So uh, this isn't really like the art that, that the devs were intending. It's very far removed from dream theory. KY theory articulates that everything is possible in signals because of beings beyond our comprehension. It says, hey, do you know that chain yellow? Let's look at Chambers' work. In Chambers' work, that's a cr there's a creature. I mean, the book itself is, is not a creature, and I know that before some Chambers theorists slam into my DMs and going, you are misrepresenting Chambers. Uh -huh. I know. But then the books, like the mark of the yellow sigil, there's a creature that exists on another plane, on Carcosa, that might not be physical, but it, it, it is able to distort reality to a degree. Now, different KIY theorists are going to disagree on different aspects, but the general concept of KIY is that everything in the game is physically possible and is physically occurring. All evidence must be considered. Now, someone who isn't well-versed in the theory, that might sound absolutely batshit, but let me give some example, uh, advantages of that. Well, dream theory might argue that Serpensky isn't real. By the way, that, that is a take some theorists have. If you argue Serpensky isn't real, any evidence from Serpensky cannot be used to generalize. Let me, like, dumb that down a bit. If I read the folk document in Serpensky and I say the game is from Arion's perspective, then we cannot prove the folk document is real. What we can say is the folk document exists as a concept in Arion's mind. Arion, someone who never would have read that document, meaning that the folk document we see could just be a projection of Arion's beliefs of what it would say. A KOI theorist or a realist theorist would just say that it is the real document. We can continue this concept to places like Rotfront, as I mentioned earlier. If you assume all evidence is real, then there physically was a spy who did physically exist. The spy is not a creation of Arion's desire for there to be something, not a recreation from the book she read as a child. If you believe in the KIY theorist, then passing the red gate is a physical event that is occurring. The red gate physically exists. It isn't a construct of the mind. So hopefully I articulated all three major interps, the importance of interps, and, and how this all stuff all works as best I could. Um, the reason this is important for me, and why I'm bringing it up now, is I'm starting to work on a Synonymous Complete Lore Explained video. And I want to touch all three in terms. I want the word complete it means complete. It means you covered everything. It doesn't mean I shove my head cannon down all y'all's throats. So uh, I wanted to make sure that at least interps were something that y'all are ready for, because when that video comes out, it is going to cover all three interps explanations and explain how they connect, how they relate, where they disagree, why they disagree. Um, and I just really want the preface with like, a, hey, here's an idea before we get that video out. Um, I hope you enjoyed. Sorry that it's this long. This is what happens when I go off script. But this has been Christopher Beast. Hope you all enjoyed and see you all next time.